Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to church. Yay, the sun's shining today, and it's going to be 50. Woohoo! <sighs> For the, this is going to be a good week, a good week. Um, lots of things on the bulletin, just like I told you last week. You need to get on the loop to check it out. There's a lot going on. You should have something on your calendar pretty much every week from now until, I don't know, April. It's craziness. Um, we've got... Super Sunday coming up next Sunday, February 12th. So um, if you like football, if you like soup, if you like Sundays, you want to be here for that. That's in the Family Life Center. Um, starts at 6 o'clock. And, of course, we have Ola's birthday. You should have seen that up on the screen on Saturday, February 11th, from 1 to 3. Big celebration in the Family Life Center. Ho hopefully you're going to be able to make it for that. Um, we've got, uh, let's see, is, it, is this week the second Sunday? We've got the nursing home ministry coming up. Is that today or is that next week? next week. So if you'd like to participate um, with uh, Gary Horsley on that, that's going to be at 2.30 at Spring Hill Village, so you might talk to him and let him know that you're, you're going to help him with that. Um, we've got First Kids Midnight Madness coming up February 17th. That's a Friday night for you guys with the uh, First NAS Kids. You want to make sure your kids are ready for that, 6 p.m. to midnight. And if you'd like to help Pastor Bree with that, please um, see her uh, or sign up on the loop. District Celebrate Life is Saturday, February 18th, immediately following that Midnight Madness for you parents. Um, we've got a big anniversary coming up celebration, Larry and Diane Carr, 50th. Yay, another one. Awesome. March 18th from 3 to 6. So mark your calendars for that. Ladies ONU is coming up April 22nd. So ladies, if you want to go to that, please sign up and let us know. The deadline is March 31st. Um, and kids... Kids Camp is already on the calendar, guys. So be thinking about that. If you'd like to sponsor a kiddo, it's June 26th to 29th. Let us know. Um, and the Vendor Fair and Car Show, second annual, right, is coming up uh, June 3rd, 2023. So um, I know Barb has some posters available if anybody wants to put those out and about wherever they are. She has some. Um, and just encourage everybody to get on the loop to sign up for that. Thank you, Carrie. Good to see you. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, man, you look really good today. <laughs> that sounded very robotic for some of you. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it is good to see you. Uh, just a couple of other things I want to add in here. Um, just uh, things that are coming up uh, real soon. Um, one thing is, is uh, as, as the Church of the Nazarene, we're... Across the world, across the globe, we're divided up into districts. And uh, Terre Haute First is a part of a district called Southwest Indiana District, all right? So every year, and things got kind of, uh, all kind of, kind of, I don't know, thrown around a little bit when it came to the pandemic time. We all know that. We all got thrown around a little bit. Um, but every year there is what is called a district assembly, and uh, they kind of drop that around certain places where places where it can be taken care of. Usually, uh, the size of a facility is important in, in hotels and so forth. So, um, just a little quick bit of history: the very first assembly, district assembly for the Southwest Indiana District, took place in Terre Haute. Uh, this year is the 75th anniversary of the district. So guess what? First NAS is hosting district assembly. All right? So that's a cool thing. Yeah, it's a really cool thing. So uh, we've got several things that need to be cared for around the place. And you know how it is when you have somebody coming to visit. Well, you try to spruce up the place. Well, because of a, of a very generous gift from, from some folks... Um, one thing is getting ready to start, and uh, all the carpet out there in the whole foyer, all the way through, all the way over to the gym, is going to be replaced. 
That stuff out there, I think that might be why some of you are so sick. There's lots of germs in that thing. You can't get that clean anymore. So it's, it's a, that's going to be an exciting thing. All that carpet's going to go. Uh, we've also got a, uh, and this is, this is a really cool thing, no pun intended. We've got a commercial refrigerator that's now down in the kitchen to replace what we have. And several other things are, are just around the pike um, to spruce up the place. And when there are needs that we have, we want you to be a part of things, all right? So you'll, you'll be asked to participate in some things to just get the house spruced up. All right? Sound good? You excited? It's exciting stuff. It really is. It really is. And uh, looking forward to that. Uh, it's good to see you, and it is time for Sermon in the Sack. All kiddos, come on down this way, and, and I think it's always, always fitting to give them a round of applause. It's good to have kids. Come on, kiddos. <clears throat> come on. Every kiddo, right on down here. Excellent. Keep coming. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Keep coming. Uh, you, you, come on. You little, come on. 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 Who else we got? There we go. Keep it coming. Good to see you all. They stop. They stop clapping for you. Are they, why, why would they do that? Oh, it's great to see you. So, are you are you excited to be here, Liam? Are you excited to be here? Yeah, you are. So, t Liam, tell tell us something really good that's going on in your life. Tell us. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Is there something really exciting going on at your house? Um. Uh, am I, are you, is your brother and your sister, are they, are they the most awesome brother and sister ever? Last time when I was like, oh, well, looked up was that in my time we played games. Okay, like, that's good. I get it. Like, but we, but we didn't, but we didn't go fishing yet. Okay. We'll, we'll figure that all out. <coughs> But but did 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 you win any of the games? No. No. Well, you got to play again so you be you can win. All right, somebody else. Anything really good going on in your life, and you just got to share it. Um. This usually helps. Did it help? Oh, it didn't. Oh. Sometimes it helps. Yeah, maybe not me either. All right, anybody? Anything else that's going on in your life, it's just so good. Anything that you would like to see happen in your life? <laughs> Anybody? Nothing? What about you, Ethan? You got nothing? Everything's cool? Everything's great in your life? Great. Well, that's good. Everybody go home. <laughs> well, uh, we got sermon in the sack, right? Somebody got a sack? Nobody's got a sack? Oh, is that the sack? What happened to that sack? Well, let me have that. No, that's okay. That might take a while. All right, let's pray, and we'll see what's going on in the sack, all right? Lord, thank you. Thank you for your goodness and your love and your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for these kids. We are blessed always by them. And it's great to be able to spend a few moments with them. So, Lord, I pray that you would teach every one of us, every one of us who are the youngest in this room and who are the eldest in this room. Every one of us teach us, Lord, something from what's in this sack. In your name, amen. Amen. I, just, I saw a little one walking away. Is she okay? She's back. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Who tied the knots in this thing? Okay. Oh, man. These little girlies, I tell you what. You know what's in here, Bobby? Did they tell you? Did they tell you what's in here? Oh, you know? Oh. I'm going to have to rip this bag open. No, it's okay. Oh. Okay. You're going to have to help me out. Help us. Okay, what, what, is, the, what is this? Sand. <laughs> okay, it's a, it's, okay, it's a small bottle of sand, right? Th does it mean anything to you? Mm -mm. She stole it from my room. <laughs> she stole it from your room? All right. 
So this is stolen sand. All right. Sand. Oh, my. Um, any, anybody? I'll tell you what. I, I, can, I will give you a million bucks. <laughs> I'll give you a million bucks if you could tell me how many grains of sand are in this bottle right now. You got it. No, no, you don't have it. But it's it's hard. It's hard to. It's okay. I'm just I'm I'm messing. Do do I look like I have that much money? Oh, stop. That's enough. So, grains of sand. Small, right? Small. Crazy small. Something as small as a grain of sand God made for great significance. Something as small as that. Now, if we, we took one grain of sand out of here, listen to me, one grain of sand out of here, we would say, well, that doesn't really mean much. Well, God said several times in Scripture, if if people would obey him, he would bless them. He even told somebody named Abraham, if he would obey God, God would bless him so much that his family would outnumber the grains of the sand. I want to tell you this. Kids, you listen. And everyone else listen too. If you will obey God, if you will do what God tells you to do, God will bless you. What a, what's a blessing? That's what God can do that you cannot do for yourself. He will provide for you. He will provide. He'll bless you more than you can imagine. You just have to have faith in God and do what he says. You'll, you cannot go wrong if you make that choice. You too. It matters not your age. Have faith in God. And he will bless you more than you can imagine. And God does not go back on his word. Amen. Oh, my. That's what God wants from you. And he will bless you. Lord, thank you for this reminder today. From something as small as a grain of sand. It's a reminder of how incredibly awesome you are. And what you are willing to do that you've promised to do if we will obey you. So, Lord, your will be done. <laughs> your will be done, Lord. We pray in your precious name. Everyone said amen. Amen. Pastor Tony, come on up here. Kids, you can stand up and go back to where you were seated there. And we'll, we'll greet here in just a minute after Pastor Tony. We're going to take up our tithes and offerings here in just a minute. I have a passage out of Mark chapter 6. And you find in life that do we learn more from the easy things we go through in life or, or the difficult things that we go through in life? I'd say most of us would say, yeah, the, the difficult things. We learn most from the difficult things in life. Did Jesus ever ask his disciples to do something hard, to do some hard things? Boy, he, he sure did. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff no bread, no bag, no money in the belt. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. I'm sure some of them, probably all of them, were asking, why is Jesus making this ministry so difficult? Why is Jesus making my ministry so difficult? And we're going to tithe here, but we all ask probably from time to time, Lord, it's just hard to tithe. This week, this month, it is just really hard to tithe. Things have come up. Maybe someone's lost a job. It is just really hard to tithe. 
but the disciples went. They did what Jesus told them to do, even though it was hard, even though it was difficult. I'm sure they had a cold night if they didn't take an extra, extra shirt with them to sleep on or a cloak. No money. How are we going to buy anything? There's no money to buy any food. But here's what happened because they obeyed the words of Jesus. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many Sikh people with oil and healed them. God used their obedience to be a blessing to other people. And so as we continue to sow into God's kingdom, God will use each one of us to be a blessing to someone else. Let's pray. Lord, you're good all the time, and no matter what we face. And Lord, what we want to see happen is to see people come into the kingdom. And Lord, it requires you working through us. It requires people saying, yes, Lord, I will do what you ask me to do, even when it's hard, even when it's hard to obey, even when I don't see how it's going to work out, I'm going to continue to obey you. And so, Lord, we want to continue to be faithful in our tithing and giving, Lord, so that people may know, may know you, that our ministries can be funded, Lord, that we can 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 continue to be a light right here at 8th and Port Harrison, Lord, that we can put in new carpet, that the lights can still stay on, that we can have equipment to praise you with, Lord. And so, Lord, all of us necessary, and it's all for your kingdom. It's not for us. Lord, it's all about you. And so, Lord, this is your tithe, and Lord, these are your people. And so, Lord, I just pray that you will use your people and your tithe to be a blessing to someone else so that they may know you as their Lord and Savior. And so, Lord, bless your people, bless the tithe, and may you receive all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Please come forward.
Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Yes. We are glad you are in the house of the Lord today. Um, Jesus promises living water. And in John, it says, On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. And when he said this, living water, it means he was speaking about the spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the spirit had not yet given because Jesus had not yet entered into glory. He's entered into glory. We have that spirit. And this morning, we need to be seeking living water. This world is so dry, and we can continue to drink physical water all we want to, but the living water is what's going to stay with us. And so let's sing this this morning. Come to the water. Let's come to the water. Let's freely give ourselves to God this morning. You will not be disappointed. Let's sing. Stand up. Let's sing.
his faithfulness. He keeps his covenant forever with those who love him. If I were to mention a name of a, of a famous athlete or actor or movie star or politician, you could probably tell me what they're known for. If I just said the word, if I just said the name Michael Jordan, you could probably tell me what's he famous for? Basketball. If I said Michael Jackson, we all know he was a, a singer. We're not here to talk about them. We're here to talk about our Lord. When I say the word God or Jesus or Holy Spirit, boy, there's so much, so much we could say. I think John writes at the end of the gospel, if all the books were written about what Jesus did, not even all the books in the world could contain everything he said and done. It's his, he's just, he's infinite, he's amazing. So our focus is on
focus today is going to be on the faithfulness of God. The, our theme this year is faith. And I just encourage you this week to read Psalm 89. It talks about the faithfulness of God. So many passages point back to the faithfulness of God. In Psalm 89, 1, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. My mouth will make your faithfulness known. We're meant to proclaim his faithfulness. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. In verse 5, the heavens praise your wonders. The Lord, Lord, your faithfulness too in the assembly of the holy ones. Who is like you, Lord Almighty? In verse 8, you, Lord, are mighty and your faithfulness surrounds you. So I have, I have a challenge this week. Read Psalm 89, meditate on that this week. And then I invite you as, as the body of Christ, as we come to prayer, I have a challenge for each one of us. Think of all the times God has been faithful to you in your life as we pray. And just spend some time thanking him for it. I just invite as many of you who feel led to come to the altar, let's, let's let that be our focus. Think of all the times God has been faithful to you and your family, and let's spend some time just thanking him for it. Which, can we do that this morning? Would you join me in prayer? Oh Lord, you are indeed so faithful to us. Lord, you're faithful every day in ways that we often even take for granted. Just knowing that the sun is going to, to rise and set and that there's gonna be seasons, winter season, summer season, fall season, spring season. We, we take things like that for granted, but it's because you are holding everything in the universe together by the word of your power. Lord, you are faithful every day with just making sure that the earth is still rotating that the sun's rising and setting, that we have seasons. Lord, you're faithful in so many ways that we just even don't even think about many times. And Lord, people, people in our lives, they let us down. They make promises and, and they don't keep it. And Lord, it, break, it, it can break our hearts. It can, it can shatter lives when people aren't faithful, when they don't say they're gonna do what they're going to do. But that's not the way with you, Lord. You are absolutely 100% faithful to every word you have declared in your Holy Bible. And Lord, we can, we can trust every word that comes from your mouth. Every promise that you have declared, even every warning, Lord, we can, we can trust every word because you are faithful. It's who you are. It's part of your character. And so, Lord, this morning, we just want to thank you for your faithfulness to us. Your faithfulness to save anyone who believes on the name of Jesus Christ for everlasting life. That is a promise we can stake our eternity on. And Lord, you promise to walk with us after we have made that decision to put our faith in you. You promise that you will guide us, that you will lead us into all truth as it's found in Jesus Christ. And Lord, you put people in our lives that continually point us back to you, even when our life don't, even when things in our life don't go as we have planned it. We see you working and we can remember the promise of Romans 8, 28 and 29, that all things work together for good for those who are, who love God and who are called by Christ Jesus. And so Lord, whatever life throws at us, whatever Satan throws at us, if we are your child, you are working in every situation, every circumstance, even though we can't see it all clearly, you are working your plan out. You are showing your faithfulness over and over. And as we read, look through scripture, we can just see how many times you were faithful to your promises, that you brought people through impossible situations it's because it's who you are, Lord. It's because you are faithful to your promises. And so, Lord, we are just so thankful for you today. We are here to celebrate you, to worship you, 
And Lord, we need you. We need you, Holy Spirit, to encourage us, to, to remind us that you are faithful, that you will never fail. And so, Lord, I just pray today that, that we will just cast our burdens upon you. Lord, um, many people are carrying burdens. Some people, some we know and, and some many we don't know. But Lord, you know what they are. And so I pray today as we are here praying this morning that we will be reminded of how many times you brought us through. How many times we prayed and you showed up. Lord, that we won't forget those God moments that we have encountered in the past. And you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And Lord, you're going to be there when we face the next trial. And you're going to carry us through when we go through the next trial. Because it's just, it's who you are. You want to be involved in your people's lives. Lord, you want to reveal your faithfulness to us. And Lord, uh, we can never exhaust your faithfulness. We can come to you over and over and over and over again. You will never get tired of us coming to you. You want us to come to you continually. And so, Lord, I just pray that you will, Lord, just lift our spirits. Help us to just renew our faith. Give us a fresh anointing today, Lord. Strengthen our hearts. Strengthen our spirit. May we always be excited about the good news of Jesus Christ. And Lord, uh, as we continue on in the service, Lord, just pray, Holy Spirit, fall on us afresh. Help us today, Lord. I also pray for Pastor Jenny, Lord, as he gives the message from your word today, Lord. May it, may it do something, our, may it stir our hearts. May we be moved, Lord, by your words today. Be with every person here today and those watching online that they may just meditate on how many times you've been faithful in their lives. Lord, you're good. We don't have to be in control. You're faithful. Lord, help us to rest in your promises. Be with us, Lord. Holy Spirit, encourage us. And as we leave here today, may we be able to say that we have met with the Lord Jesus Christ today. It's for your glory and honor we are here today. Bless your people and your word. Amen. 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 Let's stand together, all of us, as we honor God's word this morning. Uh, we, uh, of course, we're at the very first, first Sunday of the brand new month, February. Uh, we're beginning a, a new series today called Don't Give Up. <laughs> Don't Give Up. You've already uh, said some, one thing to your neighbor today. Say another thing. Tell them right now. Don't give up. That's right. Don't give up. A faith that keeps going. Faith that keeps going. Don't give up. Don't give up. Let's uh, read this together. Oh, great, uh, great story. True story, of course. Out of God's word in 2 Kings 5. Let's read it. But his officers tried to reason with him and said, Sir, if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he says simply, Go and wash and be cured. Lord, uh, we're trusting again that your word would speak into every one of our lives right where we are, right where we're needy of your word, your truth. And we, uh, we've already sang about it. I pray, Lord, that we are in greater understanding of it, that your word, God, is what gives us life. So, Lord, may fresh life flow into us. May fresh life. May we encounter something today like we have not before. We're praying this, Lord, in your name. The name that is above every other name. The name of Jesus. Everyone said amen. Amen. Please be seated. And thank you again for standing to honor God's word this morning. Don't give up. Don't give up. Uh, every uh, every football coach, every uh, every track coach, um, every uh, every baseball coach that I have and that I can remember, 
they always would say, don't give up on the play. Don't give up on the play. I guess that would especially go uh, toward football. Don't give up on the play. You play, you play all the way until the whistle blows. You don't give up. Don't give up. You ever felt like giving up? You ever gone through anything uh, in your life that I'm just tired of this? I've had enough of this. It'd be a lot easier just to throw in the towel. Ready to give up. Wouldn't that be a sad place to end a sermon? Let's all stand and go home. That's all we got. There is much more available to us than we can comprehend. There is much more available to us than our feeble minds can conceive. There is much more that has been offered to us, promised to us, than we can fully imagine. But it's an interesting thing here that what God has offered, what He has promised, what He has given to us, it is required from us, of us, that we do something with it so that what it has been given to us for, its, its purpose can be fulfilled in and through us. So if we're needing something to refresh our life, then we have got to do something with what has already been given to us. If we're hoping that our life is a blessed life, then we have got to make a, an intentional decision on what has already been given. Whatever has already been told, that's what we must be acting upon. If we really want to know what God has already promised. It's an interesting story here in 2 Kings chapter 5. You ready for this? You ready for this? If you're taking notes, here's point number one. Don't give up even in suffering. Even in suffering. Even in pain. Sometimes suffering does not involve physical pain, but there's definitely an emotional pain that we experience. There's definitely a, 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 a sense and awareness that something is broken and we feel that. So even in the suffering, no, no matter where the source is of the suffering, don't give up even if you're suffering. Here we go, verse number 1 of 2 Kings 5. The king of Aram had great admiration for Naaman. Naaman, the commander of his army. Because through him, through Naaman, the Lord had given Aram great victories. But though Naaman was a mighty warrior... He suffered from leprosy. So here is an example of someone who is great at what they do. They are responsible with the responsibilities given to them. That, that what they are a part of is very successful. Many victories have, has come the way of Aram, King Aram, of, of, of what that territory was. 
because the Lord was with Naaman, but even though great victories had come the way through Naaman, Naaman suffered something. In this instant, personally for him, it was leprosy, it was a skin disease. And we know throughout Scripture, wherever there was leprosy, there was isolation, there was exclusion, there was this pushing away. Don't get around me. Don't, don't you come around here. Get away from me. You, you don't belong with us. You, get away. We don't want that around here. We don't want to catch what you've got. Suffering. But see, this is, uh, this is where God's word is eternal. It reaches down through the corridors of time and right where you and I are, where we live, uh, what goes on in our lives, it becomes this word that happened to Naaman back there in 2 Kings 5. It is relevant for us right now. It's true for us right now, right here in February of 2023. Whatever is going on in your life, whatever the suffering is, there is always going to be this, well, get that away from me. I don't want to have to deal with that. I don't want that a part of my life. You take that down somewhere. You take that to somebody else. Don't, don't, don't bring that in here. Don't, 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 come, don't come in here with that mess. Uh, that, that's for another group. Uh, that's for, even in, this, in the case of the church, uh, you take that to another church. You, you deal with that somewhere else. Whatever's going, you just get that out of here. Even in suffering, don't give up. Even if the suffering has lasted for such a long time and you have prayed over and over and over and, and you've asked for people to pray with you over and over and over again and, and you've gone to uh, this doctor and that doctor and you've gone to that therapist and that other therapist that, that other people sent you to. On and on and on it goes. The suffering that seems to be going on. You, you've, you've tried to go to that rehab you you've tried that medication on and on and on it goes the suffering seems to continue but God is saying once again in his word don't give up And it's not giving up on the situation. It's, it's not giving up on the people around you. It's, it's God saying, you've got to believe that in me, you have, you have all that you need for wherever you are and whatever you're going through. I will take care of you. Don't give up even in your suffering. Second is this, don't give up, there is hope. Don't give up, because there is still hope. Even, even to the point where, where some might say, I don't feel like there's any more hope, because God, there still is hope. Second Kings, going to continue here, verse 2 of chapter 5. At this time... Aramean raiders had invaded the land of Israel, and among the captives was a young girl who had been given to Naaman's wife as a maid. One day the girl said to her mistress, Naaman's wife, I wish my master, her husband Naaman, would go to see the prophet in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. This young girl had seen enough 
before her that she understood that Naaman had leprosy, Naaman had suffering. And not only Naaman having the leprosy, Naaman's wife was also dealing with her, with her husband's suffering. So the house hold was suffering. And this young girl from, from Israel, was, who was a captive, who was a servant girl now, she is seeing the suffering in this house where she is serving. But she has something that has convinced her something took place in her life early on. And again, she's young. There's no indication of how old. She could be as young as, as the girls right here on, the, on, on this row or, or a young teenager. No matter what her age is, she's young, but something had got a hold of her attention and she knew that God could provide for Naaman's suffering and for his wife's suffering, for the whole household, God could do something about this situation. So this little girl had a faith in God that was beyond the suffering of those that she served. I wonder if this would, would, would just possibly get a hold of us. That we would begin to see beyond the present set of circumstances. Be, beyond the plight of life. Beyond the suffering that, that we might be going through. Or, or others that are close to us that are going through. That we might begin to say, hey, you know what? I know there's a bunch of mess going on. I know, I know the pain is deep. But God has never, ever failed. He's always provided that even in suffering, God is able to do something that will exceed our expectations of what the world might try to provide. I wonder, I, I just wonder if, it, if, this, if something like this story in God's Word would be able to, to be... To find an entrance into our spirit and begin to really stir us to the point that we say, you know what? I'm going to go along with what this, this young girl had such a faith in that, that if, 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 if they could get old Naaman to the presence of the prophet, and it wasn't just the man, it was the presence of God that had filled and was using that prophet, that, that God could heal. That God could restore. That God could take this pain and the suffering. And again, the isolation, the rejection, all, all the discouragement that went on with, with having such a difficult time or condition in life. That God, if we have enough faith, he could do something about it. A young girl had some faith. A young girl had some faith. Do we still believe that faith as small as a mustard seed, that's just that much, can really do something great? Do we still believe that? Do we really still believe that? I'm glad that there's some amen, and I'm glad there's some there's, that are not. But I'm telling you what, there has to be something that we are actually demonstrating about our belief, our understanding, our acceptance that God can do something far greater than what's going on right now. So Naaman, it says in verse 4, so Naaman told the king what the young girl from Israel had said. This, for the first time, got, got my attention. First time. Something, something was so powerful, powerful in what the young girl said that Naaman actually listened to her. She was the servant girl in his house. She's not supposed to speak unless spoken to. But something had convinced old Naaman 
that what she was saying, it was worth not just listening to, it was worth taking it to the king and say, this is what she said. Do you know that if you have a faith that's so strong and stout and secure in God and believe in God, having faith in God, it will make an impact in other people's lives too? Do you know it can transform the way people think, uh, their decisions that they make? If you have a faith in God that just, it, it's almost to the point that paralyzes people. You've got that much faith, then I better listen up. When God is sharing truth, it's for us to listen to. And asking God, please help us apply this to our lives. So each of us need to be asking ourselves, what kind of faith do I have today? What kind of faith do I really have today? In in what or in whom do I put my my faith, most of my faith? where, Where is it being funneled to? So Naaman tells the king what the young girl says, verse 5. <laughs> this is the king. Go. <laughs> Go and visit the prophet. Now, again, it's one thing for Naaman to listen to what the servant girl in his household, who is there for him and his wife, it's one thing for him to listen to this. But now the king has heard it. And what's the king do? The king is, he's he's over all people. Everyone is supposed to listen to his word. He is also responding to what this young girl said and saying to Naaman, well, go then. Go see the prophet of God. This is so crazy. That's not the way things go. See, this, this is an indication before anything even happens with Naaman that God, God is on the scene. God is orchestrating all of this. Things are not making sense. Uh, those who are in charge of others don't listen to others. They are to, they're supposed to listen to them. <laughs> go and visit the prophet. I'll I'll send a letter of introduction for you to take to the king of Israel. So Naaman started out. My goodness. Again, the question, could could you possibly have enough faith? Faith in what God has promised? That if you do that, that that would begin to begin to impact people around you. That people begin to take notice and, and what you're saying is, is not you saying that at all. That, that as, as you touch someone, it's not you touching them at all. That God is doing something even if they don't believe in God. They, they, there's something going on because remember every single person has been made by God for God. So whenever the presence of the creator is present, something begins to take place. Something begins to stir. Something begins to be noticed. Listen to what Psalm 103 says. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart. Not just a portion. Not a fraction. My, with my, all, my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he has done for me. He forgives me all my sins and he heals all my diseases. I think we're so quick to 
to say, well, I, I don't have any disease that I know of. Oh, my. There are so many things in this world that are, that are diseases, diseases of, of, of the physical body, diseases of the mental, diseases of the spiritual, that God can heal us of all diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. Don't give up. There is still hope if God is still God. Third is this. Don't give up. God will come through. Don't give up. God will come through. Which means He will provide. Which means God, who He said He was, that is exactly who He will be. God, He has promised, therefore God will take care of providing and, and bringing forth his, his, the truth of the promise. He will make it happen. <laughs> it's an interesting part of the story here. Naaman goes, he has several other people going with him, and he takes all kinds of of goods, all kinds of gifts. It's kind of the, uh, the processing that we, we typically think, if, if I'm going to get something, then I've got to give something for it. And if it's something really, really good, then I, I, it's probably going to be pretty costly. So, it, I mean, it says here <laughs> that Naaman, he... Uh, he went with 150 pounds of silver, no, 750 pounds of silver, and 150 pounds of gold, 10 sets of, of clothing, and the letter that his king wrote to the king of Israel. He's going with enough goods so that when he gets to the prophet, and to the king of Israel that he won't be rejected. He doesn't want to be rejected anymore. But you see, the thing is, it's not a matter of how much you have that you think you can get what you want or what you think you need. If God has, has had enough faith that has been put into him, God will do exactly what he has promised to do. He doesn't need gold. He doesn't need silver. It's already his anyway. He just needs someone to put enough faith in him and to be selfless enough to say, God, you are the only one that can come through here. God, you're the only one that can heal here. God, you're the only one that can put my family back together here. God, you're the only one that can save my soul and break the chains of my addiction. God, you're the only one that can save my kids and save my grandbabies. God, you're the only one that can turn lives around. Around. God, you're the only one that can do anything, anything good with this community and with this nation and with this, this global epidemic, global pandemic, not COVID, sin. You're the only one that can do it. But he's got to have people who have faith in him and him alone to do it. Let me just answer something that maybe somebody was just asking. Are you, are you saying, preacher, that maybe what's going on in my family or in my world or in, in, the, in, in our community has something to do with me and my, the kind of faith I have or don't, don't have? Listen to me. Let's not answer that. 
let's just say right now we begin to put the faith in God that he deserves and let's see if anything else takes place. Enough was enough about the gifts that he brought. Finally, he winds up, Naaman does, where the prophet is. 2 Kings 5.10 But Elisha sent a messenger out to him with this message. Again, Naaman shows up to Elijah's house. He wants to speak with Elijah because he's, he's, he's there on the word of the servant girl who said if, if, if he could go and be there with the prophet, the prophet could heal him. So Elijah sends out a messenger, go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. This is not the way that Naaman played it out in his approach. He was enraged. Word says he was so mad that the, that the man of God, the prophet of God, would not even come out and address him himself. Watch this. God just told him. God just told Naaman what he needed to do to be healed from his suffering. And because it wasn't happening, because of how it was being delivered, it wasn't suitable, it, it wasn't appreciated by Naaman, he completely missed it. Do you know, you and I, if we're not careful, we will miss God's specific personal word to us if we are looking for it to come to us in a specific way that's suitable or that we think it ought to happen. We'll miss it. We'll miss it. I believe God has something fresh for every single person here online with us. God has something specific and precious and personal for each one of us. But it is all dependent upon our faith in God. It is. It's not based upon how you and I feel. It's not based upon our, our present circumstances or, or what we live in and through back in the past or, or what, what we anticipate or what we don't know what's going to take place in the future. We've got to have a faith in God that God is God and we want to live a life that honors and glorifies and makes, makes impact in other people around us for His glory, for eternity. It's all hinging on our faith. Hear me? Let me just read it to you. Verse 11. Naaman became angry and stalked away. Oh, every one of us have done that a time or two. Didn't go our way. We're, we're mad. We're stalking away. I don't like that. I'm, I'm mad. I'm stalking away. I don't like what they said to me. I'm mad. I'm stalking away. They didn't give me the gift I wanted. I'm mad I'm stalking away. They didn't look at me nice. Oh, I'm mad I'm stalking away. They didn't, they didn't speak to me. I'm mad I'm stalking away. You get the point? Naaman 
was being just like many of us many times. Self-centered, self-righteous, wanting everything to happen our way. I thought he would certainly come out to meet me. I expected him to wave his hand over my leprosy and call on the name of the Lord his God and heal me. Here he goes. Aren't the rivers back at home where I live even better than this old river, Jordan? I could have stayed home and, and went and washed there. Wouldn't that just been fine? Why in the world am I being told to do this when I could, could have just as well done that at home? They had been turned and went away in a rage. <laughs> Again, if we're not careful, we will let ourselves whine and pout and boo-hoo and do the blame game. And we will miss what God is wanting to do. We, we, will, we will put the expectation up, the expectation that we want met, and when, for whatever reason it is not met with, with those kinds of results, then we feel as though this is not right, this isn't good enough, I want it the way I know it should be. Don't give up. Don't give up in your suffering. Don't give up where, where it seems as though there isn't any hope. Don't, don't give up when it doesn't seem as though things are working out in your favor or the way that you have, have been told it ought to work out. As, as whether it be tradition or, or ritual or whatever. Don't give up. God has something far greater than what you might have expected. But you've got to get to that place where Naaman has to get to, where that young girl had already got to, having faith that if God is God and there is faith in God, something great will happen in Naaman's life. Something great will happen in your life if there is faith Put in God and God alone. I just wonder again, is, is, there, is there enough openness to have a faith in God to do what God wants to do in your heart and in your home and in the church? verses that we read <laughs> appreciate that verses that we had read at the very beginning Naaman's officers around him <laughs> they're saying to him in verse, verse 13 they're trying to reason with him if the prophet had told you something difficult to do. Because this whole thing about going down into the Jordan and, and, and bathing in the Jordan seven times, it's just too easy. It's just too easy. It's too simple. That's why he was thinking, I, I didn't even need to... Go on this journey. I could have stayed home. The rivers, the bodies of water back home are cleaner than the Jordan. Wouldn't you have done it if it was hard? So you should certainly obey him when he has simply said, 
<laughs> to just go and to wash and be cured. If God has instructed us, if God has instructed us, no matter what the instruction is, at times it can be difficult. At times, it's going to be so simple that it doesn't make sense. But whatever the instruction is that God has given, that's what must be followed. We've got to have faith in what God has said as it's the truth. And it will do, it will do exactly what's needed, what's required. God will provide what you and I need if we have faith in Him. And him alone. But here we go. So Naaman went down. So Naaman went down to the river. It doesn't say, but I, I, I'm going to say, since he was in such a rage. That he was still bubbling. <laughs> he, he, he still had a little steam rising from the head, you know, out of his ears. Can't believe I'm doing this. I'm here. Might as well do it. A lot of faith there, you know. Oh, God, help us to get this. So Naaman went down to the Jordan River. He dealt, dipped himself in once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six. I'm done. I'm done. I'm tired of this. If he really was God, hear me. If he really was God, one time would have been enough. Oh my, how many times you and I have missed it when we didn't go the seventh time. How many times have we missed our healing? How many times have we missed our restoration? How many times have we missed out on, on the goodness of God when we limited him by not going all the way with him? What might you be? What might I become if I have the faith like that little girl had? What might just happen with your life? What might just happen with your family? What, what might just happen to the church of Jesus Christ? Locally, globally, what might just happen if we would have that kind of faith? If you will just go and you will receive what God says to you and you will do that, if we would just have that kind of faith to not stop at the sixth time. No matter how much suffering, no, no matter how, how much difficulty, no, no matter how much offense, no, no, no matter what, if we would just not stop anymore at number six, that we would go forward with number seven. He dip, dipped himself in seven times as the man of God had instructed him. And his skin became as, as healthy as the skin of a young child's, and he was healed. There is a lot of sickness that's not even recognized. 
There is a lot of disease that's not even taken notice of. One thing that I know for sure in the life of a follower of Jesus, if we as individuals are not careful, we will, we will stop on number six and lean back on our past number sevens. Hear me. You and I need a fresh number seven. You and I need a fresh dipping into the Jordan River. Don't, don't get, well, the Jordan River isn't here. It's, the power is not in the water. <laughs> the power is not in the water. It's in the faith in the one that made the water. Come on. I don't know who I'm preaching to anymore. <laughs> and I'll just tell you this. It's not a, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to say it, all right? I told the leadership team this the other day. I got another call to another church. Had to pray hard about that, as I must. I'm still here, aren't I? God says, you're right where I need you to be. If I'm going to be here, we got to take some more ground for, for, for God's kingdom. If we're, if we're going we're gonna to stick around, we got to take more of what the enemy has stolen from us. And stop allowing him to steal it away. And it's too often that we allow the enemy to, to pick and take, uh, and all of a sudden we don't have that, that exuberance, that passion, that desire, that faith that we once had when we first knew him or had revival times with him, and we are leaning on past sevens, hoping that a past seven will come back, come back at some point. It ain't coming back because God is here now. He wants you to get in again and dip in again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. To be refreshed and renewed and rejuvenated <clears throat> and have a faith that believes God can. No, no matter the suffering. No matter the difficulty, no matter the loss, no matter the struggle. I've been in the Jordan River. It's dirty. It's dirty water. Nothing clean about it. So it makes me say, hmm, it's really not about the water. It's about the faith that somebody has in God. I don't want, I don't want to have to meet my maker one of these days and say, you know what? I know I didn't have enough faith. <laughs> Hear me. We are all on a journey. We are all on this journey of growing and being shaped and, and formed more into the likeness of Jesus. So not one of us is perfect at this following Jesus thing. Not one of us is. No one ever has been. But those who get closer and closer and closer are those who have a, a, a self-denying faith in God. That they want to honor God above everything. 
That they believe in God above everything. So until Jesus comes, or until your last breath, it's time. It's time to get as many of those number sevens as you possibly can. It's time for for there to be breakthroughs in your own spiritual journeys. That, That there is something that begins to take place as you begin to place more faith and trust in God. Something begins to move inside of you that moves you to want to get as close to your God as you possibly can. And you're not going to miss out on an opportunity. You're, you're not going to hold back. You're, 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 not going to, you're not going to go off in a rage because things just aren't sounding like or things aren't going like you would like for them to go on like old Naaman. No, he finally consented. I'm going to see him. All right, I'm going to the river. But man, I tell you what, the faith in that young girl back at his house had a lot to do with him being in the water the seventh time. I believe this. There's some of you, some of you here, some of you online, because of others' faith in God, you're going to get messed up. Things are going to begin to happen in your life that's going to begin to twist you, make you struggle, make you wonder, what's what's the matter? What's going on? I thought everything was okay. I got saved back there. I I, I did everything back there. God, something's happening, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for it. I am. That things will begin to take place in all of our hearts that we say, well, this, this cannot be anything else but God. So let's take a faith assessment. Where's it at? Do I believe him enough? Am, am I, do I want to go all the way or, or do I just want to stick my big toe into the river every now and then? No, it's going one through seven completely under and being washed for what God wants to do in our hearts. Really, you've got to ask the question yourself, what am I willing to do to get closer to the one that made me? Go, wash, be cured. Go, wash, be healed. Go, wash, be saved. Go, wash, break the chains. Go and wash so that all things become new. Go and wash so that the vibrancy of knowing Jesus will come to life again. Go. Wash. Be healed. Stand with me, please. Bow your heads with me, and everyone just stay right there where you are, even, even the praise team. You all just stay right where you are. I just have a sense that uh, in a quiet moment that God has already been doing the persuasion. He's already been touching hearts. He's already been, been gathering the attention of some. And asking the question, are, are, you willing to, are you willing to step from where you are and move to the river? Move, move, to, the, move to where the, the, the presence of God is flowing. Move to where you, what you need is present.
So it's really just the love of God saying to us here on campus and online, don't give up. And possibly some of us need to hear it this way too, don't give in. Don't give in to what the enemy wants you to do. The enemy wants you to stay right where you are. God's love is compelling each of us to come closer to him. The enemy wants you and me to settle for something. God doesn't want us to settle for anything. He wants us to put all of ourselves in front of him before him. He wants us to place everything upon him. He wants us to surrender. Just like Naaman had to, he had to surrender finally to get into the water. And can you imagine the elation? Can you imagine the guy that had suffered so much that what he had suffered with physically and psychologically and relationally, all of that, with that leprosy, can you imagine what it was like for him that it was gone? And it wasn't just gone, that his skin was, was as, as a little child's. It was so fresh and good. It was made new. I want to invite you this morning to come and dip yourselves in. That's what an altar is, a, a place of posturing our heart before God. I think in too many uh, occasions and in too many churches, and possibly it's happened for you in your, in your, in your past, that, that the altar was a place where, where, where things, where people went because, well, whatever was bad. Well, yes, you know, sometimes when you are living life that is not right, you've got to come and pray. But it's a movement. It's a movement. It's very symbolic that wherever you stand and wherever your life is, that you realize in that moment that you don't want to stay that way. So if there's a need of forgiveness of sin, you want to move. You want to move physically and posture your heart spiritually before the Lord. If there is need of being washed and renewed like, like Naaman's skin was. God wants to do that with you physically, but he also wants to do that spiritually. He wants to renew you. Will you let him? Will you draw closer to him? Will you begin to have a faith that just says, I, I don't know what's going on. I, I, don't, I don't know why the suffering. I don't know why the pain. I don't know why the confusion. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm going to have faith that God can do anything with anything. I want to invite you, young and old alike, some of those that are children in here, it's time for children to move and kneel at an altar of prayer and ask God to save them, but also to strengthen them, to, to be strong boys and girls in the faith of Jesus in a very difficult world they're growing up in. Teenagers and young adults, the same. We need to bring ourselves, our lives, our choices, our difficulties, even to bring our past. And lay them before God. Symbolically today for us to throw them into the river of God. Middle-aged adults. Elder adults. Oh God. That each one of us would want to move as close. And to be and live as close as we possibly can with our maker. So right now, I invite you to come. Come and pray. Come and kneel. See yourself as 
as a, a Naaman-esque person. I may not understand what I'm doing. I may not like what I'm doing. I, I don't know what I'm doing, but I need a refreshing. I need a renewing. I'm not going to give up. I'm, I'm not going to give up. I want, I want more of God. And if I'm going to have more of God, I've got to give him more of myself. I can't hold myself from him. He's got to have my heart and my mind and my soul. He's got to have my desires and my talents and my abilities and my gifts. He's got to have me. And I've got to want him for who he is and what he wants me to have. I can't come before him anymore with my, my personal expectations, my personal want list. I've got to place myself at the feet of my maker. There may be some of you that you need to grab the hand of someone else and say, would you please go pray with me? Do that. Do that. Some of you need to do that more than you understand. Some of you need to come and pray as a family. Some of those you husbands, fathers, you need to take the proverbial bull by the horns and let's say, let's go, family. Let's go, wife. We've got to pray. It's time to believe together. Have faith together. Take that position. Be honorable. Seek to be the godly man. Seek to be the godly woman. Don't quit. Don't give up. If it's the first time you go in, you go. The second, third, keep going. For a, a seventh time is on the horizon. A freshing, a refreshing, a a cleansing, a, a purifying, a, a saving, a restoring, a blessing. I believe the, the waters, the waters are, are bubbling because the faith of people is making a difference. God has promised to be present, to reveal himself. If people will have faith. God wants to do a new thing in your life and mine. And I want to ask you as, you're, as there's this, this atmosphere of prayer. I want to ask you. I want to encourage you. Don't be afraid of something new. Be open to what God wants to do. Be open to Him. He won't do anything to any of us that isn't perfect, that isn't right. <laughs> Let's have faith. Maybe it's, let's have faith, let's exercise faith that we never have before. I need to call upon uh, every leadership team member, every staff person. I want you to come. 
even if, uh, if it's difficult for you. I want you to come. If, uh, if you have a spouse that's with you and they'll come, by all means, we've got to make sure that we are hungering. We're hungering. That we want God to move in our lives, in His church, that we're willing to do whatever it takes. But I was reminded this morning in what I read <laughs> that the early church, the brand new baby church of Jesus, when it was birthed back in Acts, they came together and they prayed together. Because when they came together corporately and prayed together and lifted up God's name, hungering for God, thirsty for God, needy for God, God's power, because of that kind of faith, He showed up. And that's what encouraged them. And that's what gave them strength to keep pressing on to do what God asked them to do. And that's why, why they continued to meet so often and pray. That's why we've got to pray individually, but we've got to pray much more so in these days corporately. That means together, unifying our voices and our hearts to lift up the name of God, to seek after Him. This is not an afterthought. I want those of you that are retired ministers, would you come to and pray? Your prayer warriors. If your spouses are able to come, like, please, by all means, if you can't kneel, find a place to sit. Oh, I don't want any, uh, any person to miss out on anything that God would want to do in your life today. Don't miss out on anything that God wants to do. Speak, Lord. We minister to hearts, Lord. Oh, wherever there are struggles you meet, meet them right where they are. Wherever there is resistance of you, God, would you meet people right where they are? Father, we bless your name. We bless the name of the one that convinced a little, a little servant girl that you were real, that you were holy. Something must have happened in that little girl's life that she knew that you were Jehovah Rapha. That you were God the healer. <laughs> she wasn't with uh, her family at the time. No doubt there was struggle in that young girl's life. She really was a servant slave girl. In the home of somebody that she did not know. But because of her faith in you God. She knew that you could make a difference in the people that she was serving. 
That's the one we're praying to right now, the one who can make a difference for anyone, no matter who they are, if there is faith. Lord, may there be some new holy disturbances that take place in every one of our hearts. That there will be some shakings that begin to take place and stirrings, Lord. That begin to move us to deeper levels of relationship with you, God. Deeper levels of our faith and our trust. Deeper levels of our serving you, honoring you, worshiping you. Not living passively anymore in our faith, but, but living, Lord, in a way that's, that's more aggressive. We want to move with you, Lord. You want us to be right where you are. But it's true, Lord. And you know it much better than we do. There are times, God, that we need you to meet us right where we are because whatever's going on in our lives, whatever's happened in our past, Whatever, we're having a hard time getting to where you are. So come to us and meet us where we are. Then, Lord, may we begin to allow you to lead us. Lead us to be closer with you than ever before. Young and old alike, Lord. This is an indication in your word that children who are living for the Lord, that have a faith in God, can make a difference in adults. Lead us, Lord. Lead us, Lord, from the waters of healing and restoration and of forgiveness and strength. Lead us from the waters of of renewing of faith and our trust. To serve you more deliberately. And those, Lord, that you are still working with, still drawing. Lord, may they not give up. May not of us, Lord, may may not one of us give up. We'll just keep pressing. Pressing forward. Because, Lord, I want personally to have more and more seventh times with you. And I want uh, my wife and my children and my grandbabies to to know what it means to have seven times with you over and over. And Lord, I I pray for that. For my my brothers and sisters in the church family, Lord, that there will be many, many seven times until you return, Lord. And that we would allow ourselves... To be completely immersed in your waters. That we'll not hold back. That we'll not set our own personal expectations and desires and wants. Oh God, forgive us for having our own criteria list. 
we'll just set it all aside, Lord. So that you can make everything new and fresh time after time after time after time again. It's in your precious name, Lord, we pray. We give you thanks, Lord. And everyone said amen. amen. Everyone said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everyone said thank you, Jesus. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you don't have to sit down. I <laughs> just want you to know I love you. Love you. Need you. We're family. And God wants us to be ever closer and stronger, unified. And as with all families, healthy families, they grow. They're reproducing. Amen? That's right. We need more babies. We need more spiritual babies. People out there are starving. And we've got the very food that they're starving for. They just don't realize it. <laughs> God bless you. Have a great rest of the day and week. You just know as you go, you've been in the presence of the Lord today. God bless you.